There is a bit of a officiating controversy bubbling here in England after the weekend's rugby. I thought it might be worthy of discussion because we are talking at a point now where TMOs are not held in the greatest regard in rugby, are they generally? Frustrations with the bunker system through the World Cup, the referral system for cards and the fact that referees aren't the ones in control and suspicion on occasions, whether accurate or not, that some broadcasters from some countries may be unduly influencing the outcome of games and the decisions which referees make as a result of the footage which they offer up on the big screens and um, and just in the broadcast of the match. So what's happened here uh, in England is over the weekend, uh, brilliant performance by Saracens, Owen Farrell at the very spearhead of that, and he was involved in uh, an incident which happened towards the end of the game. The result of the match was far was decided by this point, but the Harlequins forward Stephen Levice, um a little bit of afters um, the, away from the ball, looked like potential foul play, certainly. Some would argue definite foul play, but that's kind of not really the important point here. The important point here is that this was spotted by the commentary team, in this case Austin Healy for TNT Sport. He mentioned it on comms and then the TMO appears to have completely blanked it deliberately because he was worried about what the, what it might look like if he responded to the commentary of uh, of what's going on accident unfortunately for that TMO his comments were broadcast i don't think that was meant to happen i don't think the TMO knew it was happening but that is why it's all the more interesting because have we just heard what really goes on behind the scenes and what we're told happens and what, the way we're told it works is not actually what's going on there's quite a bit to talk about in this and yeah, I guess it's just, it's interesting and it's important because rugby always talks about those values, rugby values, integrity, honesty, fair play, all the rest of it. And is this incident demonstrating that rugby is saying things, but not actually walking the walk as well? Tell me what you think down in the comments while you're there. Give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button. That's the phrase people use, isn't it? <laughs> it helps me reach other rugby fans. I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers, and I would love it if I would earn your subscription on the channel. So let's have an actual look at what happened then. So, yeah, there's a lot of questions this throws up. Are TMOs hearing the commentary as it goes out? And if so, what are the implications for that? So just have a look at what happened. Um, first little clip here, you'll hear Austin Healy re responding to something he's seen during commentary. Owen Farrell being upset and it's worth another look. The beast comes in with his knees into the rock. It's worth another look. I think Six slides into the rook really late with both of his knees. Where he hits Farrell could be really interesting. OK, there you go. So at this point, Austin Healy, who, in my humble opinion, is an outstanding commentator. He spots things that other people don't. And, well, as happened with this incident, he spotted it. And he is only doing his job at this point. His job is to call the things he sees and call it how he sees it, which he has done. And I know, because I've I've worked with Austin Healy and and what was the BT Sport team, now the TNT Sport team, I've worked with them with, for the last seven years. And what will be happening at this point, when Austin Healy is is saying, I've seen this and we need to have another look at that, he the director in the truck will be speaking to his uh, VT um, uh, people in the team. Sorry, I worked for, with this seven years. I'm not 100% sure what the, <laughs> what the terms for the roles are. But he will be looking for the, the people to offer him the replays of what's just happened. The director is responding to what the commentators are saying and they will, will look to act on it. So that's what will be going on. At this point, this is then what happens. So you hear that voice. It appears to be the TMO uh, Stuart Tahij. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right. Can you show me what caused it? Now, it could be the referee Christoph Ridley, but I, I don't believe it is. I'm, I may be wrong on that. The ref mic is actually on and we, we hear what the ref says. The TMO mic is only turned on at points when they want it to be turned on. But is this one of those occasions where it's accidentally been left on? I've worked in radio and TV long enough to know and one little mantra you use is every mic is a live mic. Um, 
never say anything when there's a microphone around that you wouldn't be happy being broadcast. In this occasion, it looks like the TMO has said something which quite probably he will be regretting. Um, he follows it up. See, that's an issue, isn't it? That conversation was not meant for broadcast. Uh, now, I'm assuming that conversation was being had with the referee, Christoph Ridley, and I'm also assuming, and again, these are just assumptions on my part, I'm assuming there was an audio issue, which meant we weren't hearing the referee, but we were hearing the TMO. And the assumption that I'm making here is that was not meant for broadcast, and so possibly very revealing. The, um, as we now know, the, the television match official can hear Austin Healy's commentary, or the commentary in general, and has avoided investigating that potential foul play, not because it wasn't foul play and he didn't think it was worth looking at, but because he was worried about the optics of how it might appear if the commentator says something and then the TMO reacts. A very, very bad look. Now, we don't know what the truth of this is, and the RFU Premiership Rugby have said they're going to investigate, but just on the face of it, it's a very bad look because it appears to under undermine integrity, honesty, fair play, and just the right thing being done. A TMO, even if they can hear the commentary, I mean, I would question whether they should be able to hear the commentary. I think what happens is in the World Cup, they're in a separate place, but at other times, I, I understand due to cost and stuff, they might need to be sat there on the broadcast truck. In fact, I think they are. But there must be a way that the TMO can be isolated from the commentary of the match. But even if the TMO does hear the commentary, their job is to, you know, the commentator's job is to call the game as they see it. The TMO's job is to independently and with integrity call the game as they see it from an officiating point of view. And that appears to not be what's going on. And this is only going to pour fuel on big issues that people have with the whole TMO system, the bunker system. And I, th I think about the suspicion that people have had towards broadcasters of various countries and the fact that they may be able to cause undue uh, influence on the match. And I, I'm th I think of in 2022, do you remember that amazing game in Marseille, wasn't it, where France beat South Africa? Or was that one in Paris? I can't remember. Um, an amazing game. And there was some controversy about the try right at the end and it was thought to be a double movement. And if I remember rightly, the French director, there was just would not show any any replays. Would just would not that they would show replays from every angle except the one that would clear up was that a double movement or not. And the thought was from a lot of people afterwards that there's a bit of funny business gone on. And you get this a lot. You get um, there was in it was a game between was it Leon? It was in the Champions Cup, and it was between Leon. And it was an English club. I forget which one. May have been Saracens. I'm not sure. Anyway, point being, it was a French club team playing against an English team. And the French TV director spotted a what a potential high shot. In fact, it was Wasps. It was Malachi Fekatoa. There you go. Pulled it out of the memory bank. Malachi Fekatoa, the thought was he may have made contact with the head of a Lyon player. The referee said, actually, I thought that was fine. Carry on. But the French TV director continued showing replay after replay after replay, slow motion after slow motion after slow motion, trying to bait the referee into saying, look, give a card. And this is what the issue is. When it feels like it's unfair and unjust and the essence of fair play isn't at the core of what people are doing, people are going to have issues and I think we may have just heard again let's wait for the facts to come out I'm not going to preempt what actually happened but it appears to be what happened here is we have heard the things which we're not supposed to hear and possibly have we just heard how things really are now for the record I actually feel really sorry for this particular TMO I, I, I feel a bit harsh for him because that that conversation was never meant to be broadcast so rather than loading it all on his shoulders particularly, I think this is revealing as to how the system is generally, potentially. that That's the learning point here. Is, is this the sort of thing which TMOs are thinking? And if the TMOs are thinking this, why is that? There must be a kind of culture or a system which means that this line of thinking makes sense. It just so happens, it looks like on this occasion, 
we've heard what we were menaced, never meant to hear. I would love to know what you think about this one. A little bit of a, like it's not really a rugby topic, it's it's everything surrounding rugby, but fundamentally this is important because when we, when we watch the games in the big summer internationals, when we watch the big matches in the Champions Cup, Premiership, URC, Top 14, Super Rugby, Japanese League, whatever it may be, we want to know that the team that wins deserves to win and that there is fairness and integrity in everything that's going on. So, um, yeah, get stuck in in the comments. Tell me what you think. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.